Hello, welcome back to MTD CNC. I am at the SHOT Show today, a really cool show. Uh, I'm also with my buddy John at Really Cool Technology. So it goes together. Lane Technology, actually, German made, German engineering, high quality stuff, world famous, quick change products, easy for automation. I mean, the innovation just continues. But I don't like to steal thunder from anyone because that's why we do the interviews and I got John with me today. So John, let's talk about Lang overall, some of your best products, your favorite products maybe, and how you help this industry as a whole. Well, I think actually with what we're doing as Lang is that, you know, we're looking at all our vices, all our different tooling. What we're trying to do is make sure that we have flexibility in what we build out for the customers on there. We always like to talk to them on the upfront, make sure that we're start, starting with a solid base. You know, we, this is a quick sample here of what we brought down to the show, and it's all heavy because it's nice hardened steel. So I get a nice workout coming here. But this is our 5296 plate. It just allows that flexibility for our customer who has all these different plates and different vices around that they can use them in any type of an application and still count on the accuracy, reliability, and, and the durability that they've known from Lang. So. And John, let me, I want to just step in real quick because you call this the 5296, but they're usually on separate plates. Is the flexibility you're talking about allowing someone to go from 52 to 96 all in the same plate without having to flip everything out and complicate it? Yes, exactly. And that's, you know, so you might be doing a small job, in which case you'll have a 52 uh, millimeter vice. And that, with that vice, then we can go from those small ones and also we get to our bigger job. Now we can go with the same plate, go to the 96, and have all that versatility that I can move back and forth and never have to move my plate or, or build up, do the stack up, where every time that we stack up different plates on top of each other, you lose your accuracy. You start losing a little bit of accuracy on there. So we're trying to keep everything so as close to the table of the machine as possible. So yeah, it gives a lot of versatility on it. So. And it makes sense, John, and you brought up a couple of valuable points that I think the audience would like to reiterate, and you mentioned the stacking. So when we stack, we're oftentimes losing the tolerance, of course, as you mentioned, but also rigidity from time to time. Oh, yeah. And any time we get further and further away from the table, they start to compound all of these things, right? All of these attributes. And in the world we're working in right now, and we're standing here at the SHOT Show in the U.S., and we're doing reshoring like crazy right now. We're focused on automation like crazy right now. To be globally competitive, we have to keep these machines running. And what you've just described is going to keep the machines running because you guys do focus on automation. Exactly. Flexibility as well, but not only are we keeping them running, we're keeping them profitable and productive because we're not reducing our tool life. We're keeping our finish good. We can keep the faster cycle times because the rigidity is there and keeping everything exactly like you described, right? Uh, exactly, exactly. And, and actually, to another point too, is that it, us using our serration design on there, we're actually taking that vibration out of the material too. So I mean, that serrated design. A lot of people don't understand that. That when you're actually stamping, what you're doing is that you're grabbing that part, and now we can go. Uh, three times the job width and twice the height and still have that rigidity, that holding power that we need so we can go full force into the metal with our with our drills and that stuff and not lose uh, cycle time, not have to back off the machine. Let's, let's go at it full force, but because of the uh, serrations, the part doesn't move in any direction. We're grabbing it from multiple directions, so we don't have to worry about it sliding down if we angle the vise around in a and some of the holders that we have close by here, you know, next door. But the, uh, um, it just, the overall procedure and using the serration is just a wonderful technology and we always like to get our customers to move into that because they're always amazed with the results in the end. So something I want to bring up about that, John, if it's okay, is uh, back when I was a machinist, I pretty much had flat edges and I just squeezed it as tight as I could. And I didn't yeah. even use a torque wrench and sometimes I was bad for the material, oh, sometimes yeah. it was bad for the job. Learning about the stamping technology, I've now come to realize that two of the most popular ones outside of what I just described are dovetail and stamping. Right. Now when I think of dovetail, I think to myself, well I have to have a secondary operation or uh, I need two machines in order to accomplish that dovetail. Mm -hmm. Although rigid, rigid, it does work well. And then when I think of stamping, I have a, a separate entity that allows me to stamp while my machine is running. But then the question sometimes comes up and says, well, I have to pay that extra money for that stamping machine, but I'd be willing to bet with the audience right now watching that stamping and allowing your machine to run simultaneously pays for that thing in almost zero amounts of time. Oh, exactly. You know, to stamp the part, you're doing it offline. You're not taking up machining time you're not you know so your operator doesn't have to worry about it. you still have to set up a part to put in that you know in that dovetail so by stamping all you're doing you're just putting it into your stamper 
three seconds you have it done, it's marked, it's repeatable. So even if you have, let's say, somebody starting into the industry, they're getting, they're kind of feeling their way around the shop, they can get all the parts prepped and ready to roll for your operators who are on, on the machine. But, you know, just that whole, again, that durability of stamping and being able to put that in. We do have some people who start and want to use the standard jaws and force in that stamp, but we prefer them to use a stamper because that's what it's designed for. And that distortion that you talked about, we're leaving that too. So, uh, yeah, it just gives you wonderful results on there. And like I said, you know, if you can take and you can maximize your cutting tool time and you get that in there, you know, a lot of like what we see around here with the different manufacturers of drill bits and that, their technology's come a long way. We want to take advantage of that on our floors. So. Yeah, I agree, John. And something else I to talk about with these serrated edges is, uh, in my inexperience, so maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong here, is when I'm running with a, a soft material, say like an aluminum, or for our English audience out there, aluminum, uh, when I'm running with aluminum, I can actually physically, with a torque wrench, take a look and leave some serrated teeth in there without yeah. needing a stamping machine. The, the stamping machine itself although valuable for aluminum, is extremely valuable for the steel because physically making that torque pressure on the steel to give it the rigidity it needs, to get the cut it needs, and remove that vibration from my cutting tools, that's where it really comes into play, right? That harder materials. That yeah, definitely is, definitely. And even in aluminum, if you go in there and let's say I go, oh, I only cut aluminum, so I'll do that to my jaws. Well, first of all, you're putting that pressure on jaws that aren't meant to do stamping, you know? So the stamping jaws are actually harder on there. And then the other thing too is that you don't realize is that actually with aluminum, if I keep torquing on this, on my vise to put it in, I'm not actually getting a true, let's say the true bite that we want, the true serrations that we want in that part so that we're grabbing it in multiple directions. We might actually be pulling it down in aluminum and that which in which case it makes it a lot weaker when you're actually holding it in the vise. So, you know, so it's that whole technology. We always encourage our customers is that, okay, if you don't want to take that step into a stamper, okay, Use the vices, put that in, but send us some of the material, okay? And what we'll do, we'll stamp it for you, send it back to you. That way you do your apples to apples comparison, and you're going to see where that payoff is going to come in for you. So. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. Now let's slide into automation. You know, let's sure, slide, right, slide, right. slippity slide. slide. All right, so. Came up here. <laughs> <laughs> so into automation, it's the buzzword that everybody's talking about. We feel right. like there's a couple of different groups when it comes to automation. The ones that feel like they need to do it, but are a little bit nervous about it. Yeah. The ones that don't feel like they need to do it, but that's what these videos are for because we all kind of do. Oh, yeah. And the ones that have moved into it and are really starting to find profitability, profitability on a global level when it comes to that competition. So yeah. I was actually in Germany recently with your team, as you know, yeah. and yeah. I saw one of the coolest setups, one on a Hermelay and one on a DMG Mori with this whole tray system that went in and runs separate vices throughout whatever time frame those cycle times are. But I'm talking, I can't remember exactly how many vices there were, but it was a lot. And you could literally set up a different job on every single vice or the same job on all the vices and run a hundred different jobs or a hundred of the same job. But regardless, it gave you the ability to run seven days a week, 24 hours a day, through all year long if you wanted to, and you can actually just monitor that with some of the software that's out there and see what's going on in your shop the entire time. It's a really incredible automated cell. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, Lang tried to keep it real simple as far as their design, and they have that, you know, two cart, four cart system. As a matter of fact, we're talking even a single cart. Uh, and looking at that and the vices that you've already invested in, or maybe uh, new vices that you want to put onto the machine, using that type of technology but making it real easy for the operators to be able to come in there just basically do their little planning on the control as far as I'm going to do this job you know I'm going to take I, I want this place this place this place to run but be able to take that cart system move it in and out of the robot and have the robot detect it pick it up and go uh, it's always a scary thing for anyone to get into automation in their first steps but I think what really happens is that once you actually take that initial step into automation the benefits really outweigh it and you really start seeing it's just like some of the other technology is scary at first but the profitability that you're going to see after you get in there you start realizing all these different new avenues that it opens up for you and how you can really take advantage of everything uh, that Lang's put together. So. It's kind of like how I get nervous before I do any of these interviews, right? I get real nervous but you got to get courageous and convey the information out there. Alright John with that being said I see your products everywhere and just to reiterate that 
right behind us is another company, KME CNC 5-axis systems, and I'm looking at your products right here, right, I mean, the job shops I go into, obviously partnerships everywhere you look, they're reliable on Lang because Lang itself is reliable, right? Exactly, exactly, and that's what we try to do. We try to make sure from the beginning to the end that customers can count on our parts, our products. When they put them on, we, we recommend the right materials, the right vices and that stuff, and again, it goes to that conversation because where do you want to go in the future on there? If I'm going to buy a small vice, but go down the line, I want to expand into maybe bigger parts or or uh, more and more production. Well, let's talk about that on the front side because I want to make sure you understand what other jaws you have available for these vices, what other center jaws. What, you know, we have a lot of different options on there. And going back to a comment I made at IMTS on there, we're looking and we're constantly getting input from our customers telling us about they'd like to see you know, this in a vice and that. And it's, uh, Germany is amazing as far as, far. we'll go back to them and go, oh yeah, we had this, it's kind of a cool idea. And all of a sudden I have a drawing the next day and they go, yeah, we've done that. You know, so, so we have catalogs on there, but we can't put everything into it on what we've done. So what we like to do is talk to that customer and then when they come up with those ideas, well, either it's a new thing and we can take it to the zoo and go talk to the German and, and let them come up with that new engineering, or we can show them some of the examples that we've had and what we've created over the history of, of Lang. So. Yeah, that's perfect. And something else I'd like to reiterate for you guys as well is if you go to the Lang website, there's actually an area where you can scroll the bars across to see how quickly you can pay off your investment with the Lang work holding. And with that being said, what's the website where they can find you? Uh, easiest is, well, easiest, maybe not the easiest, it goes to www.lang-technovation.com. There you go. It's simple as that. Tobias, Thomas, here you go, my friend. Shout out to you as well, John. Yep. Appreciate you doing Thank this you. interview Thank with you. me. Yo, and I love seeing going. the products right behind us as well. Everything has worked out perfectly. Thank you all for watching, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.